What's going on guys? It's ETA Prime back here again. Today we're going to be turning this dumpster PC into an emulation machine. Well, at least we're going to be trying to do that. Now by dumpster PC, I mean this was actually given to me for free. My neighbor was about to throw it out. It's actually been sitting in his garage for a little while. The hard drive died on it a couple years ago and uh, he asked me if I wanted to do something with it. And I said sure before I even knew what kind of specs it had. And you know, I didn't get really lucky with it, because basically what we have here is a Core 2 Duo. It's an E8400, two cores running at 3 gigahertz. We have 2 gigabytes of DDR2 RAM. But one thing that I was actually surprised about, given it's definitely an older card and not much use in gaming right now, it's got a GTX 560 2 gigabyte variant. So yeah, this is definitely an older PC, and my neighbor had it since it was brand new. It came out of the box running Windows Vista, it had 1 gig of RAM. And over the years, he's upgraded it to a whopping 2 gigs of RAM. He's also added a 400 watt power supply and this GTX 560 from Pallet. So yeah, newer NVIDIA drivers are basically non-existent for Windows on this card here. And unfortunately, just never got Vulkan support. And that's kind of a big letdown. But uh, we're going to see what we can do with OpenGL. And in order to do all this, we're going to be running an operating system called Botocera. First thing I tried was everything from a USB drive. This does work on other PCs I've tested, but for this one here, load times were ridiculously slow. We do have USB 2.0 up front and USB 1.0 around the back here. Now eventually it would load up, I could get into the operating system, but even just trying to launch an easier to run game like a Game Boy Advance game, it took ages. So what I did was grab a 2TB Western Digital SATA drive that I had laying around. I just installed Botocera on this, I threw some games on it, plugged it into the PC itself, and everything loaded up way quicker. I mean, a hundred times faster. Given that this thing is so old, initially I was a little worried that the hardware just wasn't up to par, but as soon as I installed this drive here, I was able to get in and everything's working pretty decently now. The only thing I wasn't able to get working with this rig here was sound over HDMI. I tried absolutely everything, so I actually just resorted to using the 3.5mm audio jack on the PC, and as soon as I plugged it in, we got sound, but HDMI sound isn't working through this GT560. I didn't try any wireless controllers with this rig, but if you did end up doing something like this, I would highly suggest buying a controller that comes with a 2.4GHz dongle, or you can just go with a USB controller like I'm using here. These are relatively cheap, and they do work great in Botocera. First up, we're going to go with Dreamcast. I'll do DOA2. By the way, we're using the Flycast core inside of RetroArch. Alright, so here we are with Dreamcast. FPS is up in the top right hand corner. And going into Dreamcast, I really didn't think we'd have any issues with it. After all, we do have a 3 GHz x86 CPU here. It doesn't take much to run Dreamcast, whether you're using Flycast or Redream. There might be a few harder to emulate games that do struggle a bit, but uh, even when it comes to DOA2, we're running at 60 here. So let's go ahead and move over to, let's say, PS1. PS1 is also looking really good, but when it comes down to it, I mean, this will run on the Raspberry Pi too, so it doesn't take much at all to run these PlayStation 1 games, even a harder one like Bloody Roar 2. Moving over to a Thomas Wave, we're using the Flycast core, same core we were using with Dreamcast, and performance is great, but we do have some graphical issues. If you take a closer look at the characters, there's some black boxes around them, and this could really come down to the older GPU. Here's N64 using RetroArch and the Moop N64 plus Next core. Really great performance with 007 Goldeneye. I didn't do any upscaling, but uh, checking out the FPS in the top right hand corner, there's a chance we could go up a bit with it. Either way you look at it, N64 emulation was originally built for x86, and these Core 2 duos do handle it really well. I also wanted to test a little bit of arcade emulation. Here we have Ninja Turtles. I'm using MAME 2003 inside of RetroArch. And if you wanted to use the standalone version of MAME, it should work really well also on this x86 CPU. But we're getting great performance, and something like this would actually be really cheap to put inside of an arcade cabinet. So this PSP emulation was actually pretty impressive. I was able to go up to 3x resolution with this. 
At 4x, I did notice it drop a little bit, but at 3x, even Tekken 6 is running at full speed. This is the standalone version of PPSSPP. FPS is in the top right hand corner. It's running at 60. I mean, this is looking really good. I got one more here for PSP, still at 3x resolution. Remember, we don't have access to Vulcan on this, so this is all OpenGL. So it'll do MAME, it'll do NES, SNES, Game Boy Advance, N64, it even does Dreamcast and PSP pretty good. But what about GameCube emulation? Now in the past I have tested a very similar CPU, a Core 2 Duo. It was actually running a little over 3 GHz and believe it or not, with the right GPU, we did get some pretty decent GameCube emulation using the Dolphin emulator. And since Botocera has Dolphin built in, I figured we'd go ahead and test it. I wanted to start off light, so first up we have The Simpsons Road Rage. We're using OpenGL, I'm compiling shaders before the game starts, and we're at the native GameCube resolution. I didn't upscale or anything like that, I think that's really going to be where it kind of struggles, even with the easier to run games like this one here. But with something like Road Rage, Billy Hatcher, even Time Splitters, you should be able to get away with 60 FPS, OpenGL, native resolution. Now I don't think it's going to do the harder to emulate games, but let's move over to something that I always like to test, which is is Auto Modalista. Alright, so everything's looking pretty decent now. It's actually working better than I thought, but as soon as I come around this corner, we got some more effects on screen and a larger draw distance. It kind of falls on its face, and I was expecting this. So when it comes to the harder to run games on a rig like this, it's just not going to cut it, especially something like F Zero. I mean, you're probably only going to be running that game at about 38 FPS. But uh, it's actually trying its hardest, and even with some Wii 2.5D games, it's going to run at 60. This isn't bad at all, and I was expecting a lot worse out of this rig. And the final thing I wanted to test was PS2 emulation. Botocera uses the standalone version of PC SX2. The only way I could get this Crash Bandicoot game to run at full speed was to use the European version. So right off the top, we basically knocked off 10 FPS because this will only run at 50, and I have a ton of hacks on in the background. I got some frame skip going. I mean, I had to turn on basically every hack we could in the PC SX2 emulator to get this to run. Crash Bandicoot The Wrath of Cortex is an easier PS2 game to emulate. When we jump up to something a little harder to emulate, like Gran Turismo 4, we're not even into gameplay yet, using the European version of the game here, so we should be running at 50. I've got all the hacks on that I can run before the screen goes black. We're at around 34 FPS with this one, 34 to 37, and we haven't even started the race. Since I have so many hacks on, as soon as the race really starts, it locks up, and the same goes for other harder to emulate PS2 games like God of War 2. It just locks up on me. And I think basically what's happening here is I just have way too many hacks on. If I was to try to run this game without any hacks, we're at about 18 FPS. Now the other thing that might be happening with these harder to emulate PS2 games is the whole system's running out of RAM because after all, we only have 2 gigabytes of RAM in this thing. So yeah, it definitely works great for emulation, and these Core 2 Duos actually do pretty good. You gotta get something at least 3 GHz to get the performance that you were seeing in this video. But uh, another thing to keep in mind is if you do want to put something like this together, it's going to be burning a lot of electricity. It's going to pull a lot of wattage from the wall. I've done some tests here. I use a kilowatt meter plugged into the wall, and this is total system power consumption. The CPU and GPU in this thing are very inefficient when you compare it to newer CPUs and GPUs. Actually, I've seen online that this GTX 560 can pull up to 150 watts. But in my test, this thing idles around 72 watts when it comes to 2D gaming like Game Boy Advance, 118 watts, and on average for Dreamcast, PSP, and GameCube, this thing's pulling 170 watts from the wall. And that GTX 560 does put off a lot of heat. 
So that's going to wrap it up for this video. I really appreciate you watching. I mean, it's totally possible to run Botocera or your favorite emulation operating system on a PC like this, even with that older Core 2 Duo. By the way, this is the 64-bit version of Botocera working on this little CPU here. If it was up to me and I had to build a cheap PC for Botocera, I would go with something like a 3rd Gen or 4th Gen i5 along with a GT 1030. But if you pick something like this up for free or close to free, you can still get by with playing some of your favorite retro games at full speed. And the performance that we saw really isn't that bad for the age of all these parts here. If you're interested in getting Botocera up and running on a PC that you already have, I do have a full tutorial. Link for that is in the description. If you have any questions, let me know in the comments below. And like always, thanks for watching.